Hi everyone, this is Nancy LT Hamilton with another video and this video is on wire working. We're going to be making swirls and scrolls and U shapes and a bunch of other stuff. Um, there's a companion video that will be following this one that will be showing you how to use these elements in a soldered fashion by making jewelry from them. But these pieces can also be incorporated into wire working very, very easily. So just thought I'd cover the basics here and uh, I think it's time to get started. The first thing you're going to need are good round nose pliers. Now what makes a round nose plier good? Well, if you look down here, you want your tips to come together. Nice even line. Um, hopefully both of the same size, the jaws, which are these. And having a fine tip on the end makes things so much easier. Another thing you're going to need is a wire cutter. Um, this is the Power Max made by Kiba. And I believe it cuts up to like 12, 14 gauge, something like that. These are really strong and they have one flush side so you can always cut a nice flat edge. One of the tricks for creating repeatable bends or loops is to mark your pliers. So this can be done easily by squeezing them together, determining where your diameter of your circle is. And you can draw one line or you can draw many depending on how many different uh, sized openings you're going to be creating. For this video, we're going to be using 18 gauge round copper wire. Um, it's pretty soft as it comes on the reel. I believe it's dead soft, which means that it's annealed or very flexible. But I've found that annealing this actually makes it even softer. Um, so if you're having issues with your hands or you just want to make life easier, go ahead and anneal this ahead of time. I do have a video on annealing on YouTube that you can watch on how to anneal wire and I also have one on annealing sheet metal. Now, 18 gauge works nicely. It creates a round uh, loop, whereas 16 gauge, the loops tend to oval. Um, here, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can hopefully see it better. Oh, wrong way. So this is uh, 16 gauge and see how that center is oval compared to the 18 gauge which is rounder. The thicker your wire is, let's say you go up into 14 gauge, the less chance you're going to have of it being really truly round. Just thought I'd mention that. Here I'm going to straighten my wire. I'm going to grab one end of it with my pliers and that's a half a clothespin flat side on top of the wire and I'm going to push down really hard and drag the wire through the two pieces of wood. There are other methods for straightening wire. I believe I've discussed them before, um, but I will cover them briefly for you now. One method for straightening wire, uh, this works best for longish pieces. If you ever had a piece of that short, this might be a little wasteful because it kind of gets messed up the end that's in the vise and then I'm using serrated uh, pliers so they're going to mess up another end. Uh, what you do is grab hold of the one end and kind of get in a tripod stance and then pull and you can actually feel it stretching but it makes it really nice and straight. And this method, the last one, works best with shorter pieces of metal. You don't want to have any bows in it. You have to kind of run your fingers along it. And then using either a steel block or a piece of wood, push down while rolling. And this works for thick and or thin wire. 
So you'll see me in the video uh, just cutting these and shaping them, and that's because these were all practice demo pieces. But when you're ready to do your final piece, I highly recommend that you either use a nice, fine, like a four cut uh, needle file to take to flatten this edge here, and there's always a little sharp edge around here. So angle your file and just spin the wire over it to make it nice and smooth. You can also use um, the, you can use both, or you can use just the sandpaper. This is 400 grit um, taped onto a tongue depressor. And having that finished edge will add a, a sense of your dedication to your craftsmanship, which is always a good thing. So with your 18 gauge round copper practice wire here, I'm going to do a flush edge and because I'm doing practice stuff I'm not going to finish this edge. If this was a final piece I would sand or file these edges smooth. So I've got my marks and I need to determine at what mark I'm going to be making my loops. So I'm going to choose this one right here. I'm going to put the wire in between the jaws so that it doesn't stick out. It's running down the center of this interior part and lined up with that space. My hand's going to be in this position with my fingers facing down. My left hand is just going to hold and keep the wire tight against the round nose. So I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to do a partial turn with my wrist but not as far as I could go which is there. Then I'm going to release my grip on the pliers and slide the pliers back down to the starting position. Fingertips facing down making sure that this is lined up on top of my mark and I'm going to do another turn not all the way just partially release let go and go back for the third and make sure that this wire is on the line and that this hand is pulling down. You want the wire tight against the uh, round nose. So then when you're done, you can check and make sure you've gone far enough. You should have a circle. Um, you want to do this quite a few times over and over and over again called practice. Okay, hand down, turn, partial, rotate back, turn, partial, rotate back, turn. So make about 500 of these <laughs> and then we'll be ready to go on to the next part. Isn't that fun? Now to move on to the single scroll, we're going to make a um, circle just like we did earlier. One, two, three. Now this is going to change. See, my wrist is bent like this. So what I'm going to do is release, keep the pliers right where they are, but I'm going to release my hand so that my wrist is straight again. And what's going to happen now is I'm going to turn again. I'm going to keep my thumb down here, and this finger is going to push down as I turn. So we're going to do this. So we end up with this curve like that. So make a bunch of those until you get good at that. And then we'll do um, the double scroll. All right, the double scroll is essentially the same as the other end that we did. So we're going to grab. Make first make a circle. One, two, three, and then we're going to keep. Remember the wrist is bent at this point. I'm going to release, move my hand so my wrist is straight. This finger is going to be here. You can hold the scroll like this, and this finger is going to be pushing down as I turn. So there we have the double scroll. Now I'm going to show you how to make a question mark scroll. 
so the one this is about three inches by the way um, pick your spot go ahead and make a circle one two three um, and I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, the wide scroll here so I'm going to slip my hand down around and push with my finger so there's that part of it and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to make another circle I'm sure I'm doing this in the right direction I want to do, do the curl on the opposite side I can't remember which one I was using you can vary the location of on your pliers so that you change the looks of the one part has got a wider circle than the top so it's just another design variation so I'm going to make a circle it's just a slip one two three and then remove your pliers so, and I've got my circle here now I'm going to switch to my flat nose and I'm going to keep these on the side where there, where I'm not going to be bending the wires, so this is going to slowly work around that inner shape, and I keep adjusting the pliers while bending this around, and I'm just following the line of the circle. You can do this as many times as you want. Uh, you may want to, you know, say, okay, I'm only going to do it three times. As long as you keep track and count, you can get a more repeatable shape. So that is the question mark scroll. I'm going to start by making a circle. I'm going to use one of these bigger ones. One. Remember to keep that wire tight up against that um, leg of your plier and this hand on the left is pulling down so once you have your circle completed then you want to take your pliers and put them basically like that so your wire is going to be coming out to the left and we're going to always move the plier to where that wire is coming out now if you start to get off like here you can quickly give it a little squeeze the thicker the wire, the little more difficult this is. So we're going to go back to here, pull around, go back to here, pull around. And I'm squeezing pretty tight on these pliers. But see how I'm always going back to where that wire is at almost a 90 degree angle. Now as I get towards the end, I may want to think about putting a curve on this. So I'm going to grab, it's a little loose here, a squeeze. I'm going to grab my wire like I normally would. I'm going to start to wrap the curve, but I'm going to put this finger in. So as I turn, this is going to shape around with it. And you can, like, I don't like the way that looks there, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit by pushing up on it. And there's a big spiral. So another thing you can do with your wire and your round nose pliers, if you so desire, is to make um, a U-shaped link that can either have the eyes facing inward or outward this is uh, first make your perfect circle on each end same side and you can use whatever you want I mean you can use the handle of your hammer remember whatever you're shaping it on it's gonna take on the shape of that tool or implement Something with a rounder belly is going to make a rounder belly link like that. So if you're going to do the inside, you want to turn these and make sure that they're even. 
This is using something uh, pretty small for this length of wire. So I'm not going to get that big bulgy belly. I'm going to get more of an actual U shape. Like that. Now these can be reshaped. You can put them over ring mandrels or over larger mandrels and tap on them uh, to bow them out. I mean, this is a big difference in size and shape. So anyway, that's another thing that you can do with the round nose and your wire. And of course, these can be hammered and made to have more dimension to them. So I have found that if I want to do match sets of pieces that I it's uh, easier for me to remember what I did if I do them right one after another. Um, you can also keep a log on this, especially if you're going to really get into this. And you want to make repeatable shapes, you can take a photocopy of this and then write down the length of the wire you used, how many turns, you know, you can be very methodical about it, which I am not going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is just show you this, the double method here. So I'm going to make a decision on where I'm going to be placing, how big my circle is going to be, and I'm going to repeat that on both sides. So now I have two matched circles. So at this point, I want to check to make sure that I have the same curve. So it's hard to t exactly perfectly reproduce every time. So that looks pretty good. I think this one's a little out. Okay, so now I'm going to make the circle on the bottom so I can lay these on top of each other to ensure that they're the same shape and size. Okay, they look good. So now I have a matched pair and I can use these in the creation of a piece. So I'm going to finish these up. I'm going to show you one more thing and then maybe put some together, give you some ideas. Now what we can do, if we so desire, is we can flatten portions of this, changing the, the diameter of the wire by hammering. But I have um, a domed, shiny surface that I'm going to be hitting with. Remember, whatever is on your hammer or your other piece of steel will be transferred to your metal, so you want shiny and smooth. Now I've hammered more on this outer edge here so that it was a little wider there. I'm going to continue it down a little bit more right in this area. So now I have to try to replicate that on the other side, on the other part. And hopefully we are aesthetic still. Okay, that looks pretty good. So you can go ahead and do that to a bunch of different shapes. I'm going to do that and then I'll um, meet you back here for putting things together. Note on the hammering before we move on um, is it's a good idea to count how many times you hit something. So if you're going to hit five times here, try to do the same amount of strength and count uh, on the other piece that you're going to be using if they're match sets. So then once you're done, and you've made a bunch of different shapes or several uh, matching shapes, then you can start to put it all together and make patterns with it. Here's one design idea. Um, I'm thinking a bracelet, and I'm thinking that right here, I'm just too lazy to get up and get them, is put a jump ring here. And then I can, once this the U shape is soldered on, to this element and jump ring is soldered on to this element, I would put a couple of jump rings uh, between the two loops and create a link and the same could be done with down here and then down here we'd have another. So this could make a really cool bracelet um, and what I would do is photograph this as is so I can remember how I put it together in the first place. The problem with <laughs> creating these designs is remembering what they were. 
that's just one idea. Earrings, you could do tons of things with earrings. Um, pendants, you know, even rings. And like I said before, you can totally wire wrap these. Add these to your wire wrapped elements. So, exciting. Well, folks, the party's over. It's time to go home. Um, join me next time when we put these together into two different bracelets, a cuff and a link bracelet. I'll show you how to solder them, form them, and uh, in this case, do a clasp on that one. Thanks for joining me, and uh, all I can say is ciao.